Hello everyone, this is the first video in the immunology series where I shall be discussing the basics of immunology. So to give a start, we have to understand that our immune system can be broadly divided into two, the innate component and the acquired component. Now as it can be inferred easily from their names itself that innate immunity is the one that is present right from the start and acquired immunity is the one that is gradually acquired over a period of time. The innate immunity can be thought of as a home intruder alert and response system where whenever an intruder tries to cross the outermost boundaries of a house it gives an alert and it also responds in the basic way to stop that intruder from entering. So this is what the innate immunity is like. It is the first line of control for any intruder that tries to enter the human body. Acquired immunity is like the police force that is called once the crime has been committed and is a more powerful but a gradual response to whichever intruder is uh, creating problems in the body. So now innate immunity, the first thing that we have to know that it is non-specific. It does not specifically recognize antigens and has a universal response based on a set of patterns that it recognizes. So what are the patterns that are recognized by the innate immunity? These patterns include the PAMP that is the pathogen associated molecular patterns. They also include DAMP that is the danger associated molecular patterns. So these are specific molecular patterns that are present in certain microbial components and that are released by necrotic or injured cells. And these patterns are identified by the innate immune system. Now how, how does the innate immune system identify these uh, patterns? This is by the help of certain pattern recognition receptors. These pattern recognition receptors are uh, present on the components of the innate immune system and these pattern recognition receptors broadly they can be divided into four uh, major components. The first is the set of toll like receptors. These toll like receptors are around 13 types of toll like receptors with around 10 present in the mammalian system. These are called toll like because of their resemblance to the toll receptors present on drosophila. The second are the nod like receptors, the nod like receptors. The third are the C type lectin receptors in short CLR, the C type lectin receptors and the fourth are the rig like receptors, the rig like receptors. So now the C type lectin receptors respond to molecular patterns found in fungi. The rig-like receptors respond to nucleic acids present in the viruses. So these are the pattern recognition receptors that are responsible for identifying the various type of patterns present on the pathogens. Now we have to know certain toll-like receptors and what particular patterns they respond to. So I shall just mention it briefly here. The toll-like receptor 2, TLR2, as you can see it's two here. So this responds to ticoic acid. This ticoic acid, this is present on the cell wall of gram positive bacteria. It also responds to zymosan that is present in the fungal cell wall. Now this is two. So let's move on to four before discussing three. And that is how I want you also to remember it. TLR2 is for ticoic acid present on gram positive bacteria. TLR4 is for the LPS that is present on gram negative bacteria. So TLR2 for gram positive, TLR4 for gram negative. Then let's come to TLR3. TLR3 is responding to DSR. What is DSR? This is the double stranded RNA. So you can remember it like this. DSR is recognized by toll like receptor 3. Then you move on to toll like receptor 5. Now five recognizes the patterns of flagellin. Flagellin is a component of several bacteria. So flagellin is detected by TLR5. Lastly is TLR9. Nine is a big number. So this responds to several CG repeats that are present in several bacteria. So CG repeats are recognized by TLR9. So these are the some toll-like receptors and 
the particular molecular patterns that they detect. One more additional thing that I'd like to add here is not like receptors, they act via the inflammasome complex. I'll be discussing more about the inflammasome complex later on. So all in all, if you see the components of the innate immune system, the first line of control in the innate immune system is the skin or the epithelia. These contain certain antimicrobial proteins that are called as defensins. So they form the first line of control. The second is the mucosa and they also uh, there are also lymphoid tissue associated with it. So mucosal associated lymphoid tissue that is malt and gut associated lymphoid tissue. So these form the components of the immune system. If you divide the components of the native uh, immune system or the innate immune system into cellular and humoral components. Then the cellular components of the innate immune system include the NK cells, the neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, the monocyte macrophage system, which is the most important system of the innate system, the mast cells and the dendritic cells. These dendritic cells that are present on the epithelia as well as in certain lymphoid organs are very important, have a very important role to play in the innate immunity. The humoral components include lysozyme, which is present in our saliva. Uh, it also includes C-reactive protein, the mannose binding lectins, interferons, especially type 1 interferon, the lung surfactant for several inhaled pathogens, as well as the complement proteins, especially of the alternative pathway and the lectin based pathway. So this is all about the innate system and what we understand the basic idea of an innate system is that it acts as the immediate response force basically even before the infection is setting in you will have an innate response system now let's talk about the acquired immune system acquired immune system like i told you is like the police force that has been called in after the crime is committed so few basic things that you should understand from this perspective is that it will respond to a huge diversity of pathogens. It has that ability. Second is that, that it is the second line of defense. It is never the first line of defense. Third thing is it is very specific. It can respond specifically to a specific antigen. It can discriminate between self and non-self antigen. This discrimination capability is not exactly present in the innate system and if certain self antigens also uh, can be recognized by the pattern recognition receptors. So their components include the lymphocytes as well as the products of lymphocyte along with the complement cascade that is the classic pathway. So acquired immunity is in sense more diverse, more specific and more powerful than the innate immunity. It also has a component of memory. That is the second time the intruder, the same intruder enters the body, the immune response will be better equipped to deal with it more efficiently. So that is a better response in the second time is that memory component is there in the acquired component. So this is the basic of innate versus acquired immunity. And uh, by understanding these basics in the subsequent videos, we shall be moving on to the more advanced. Topic. So that's it. If you did like the video, uh, you can like and subscribe, share and thanks for watching.